mirrors are extremely important in programming as they tell you exactly what's wrong with your code and how you can fix it. And Discord PY has a very interesting way of how it deals with errors and how you can set it up to receive errors properly from Discord PY. And that's exactly what we're going to be going over in this video as it's an extremely important thing that you need to understand how it works. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is part 11 in creating a Discord bot in Python. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use and deal with errors as Discord PY does it in a very interesting way. Just before we jump in, I want to quickly say that I've got a Discord server. So if you've got any problems, then please do consider joining and we'd love to help you out on there. Or even if you don't have any problems, please do consider joining. We're trying to reach 100 members and we're so, so close. So please do consider joining. But without further ado, let's get started. Let's dive in. So then, your code can produce errors in many different ways. So maybe you like mistyped something or that you didn't indent something correctly. Well then that's a general programming Python error. This called PY's error checking thing that I'm about to talk about wouldn't pick up on that as that doesn't directly relate to that. You've just coded it wrongly. You didn't code it correctly as you made a mistake with the Python. However, then you can get an error that's specific to Discord PY. So let me explain as it can seem kind of confusing about the difference between the two. So then what a Discord PY error is, is so let's take, let's take this, let's take this unban error that I just have here. And what this error is essentially doing is it's detecting, so let's say the user who wants to unban another user, if they don't have permission, so let's say they don't have admin, then this error will be called. I hope you can see what I'm saying. So these sort of errors is if like the user doesn't have permissions, or maybe you haven't passed in all of the arguments to a statement. Maybe when you're unbanning a user, you don't actually type in the name of the user that you want to unban. That would then cause an error, and that would cause a Discord PY error. If you see what I'm saying, I'm trying to split up the Python errors and the Discord PYs, PY errors into two separate things. And I hope you can see why and understand both of them, if that makes sense. So then, in this video, I'm going to be focusing on these Discord PY errors and how we can utilize them and use them. I'm going to assume you know how to deal with like Python errors as in, as in like maybe you don't know the correct Python syntax or you've misspelled something or any, anything like that. You see what I'm saying? So then we're going to be focusing on these Discord PY errors. So there's two ways in how we can kind of utilize errors in Discord PY. We can have a general overview error. So this will apply to all commands or we can set up an error catcher for just specific commands. And I'm going to go over both of these. So then we're going to start with these general overview errors that apply to all commands and events. And I just want to iterate the difference between these two. So a general one that is for all commands and errors. And then you can also have ones for specific commands like we have here, an error catcher for just the unban command. So I hope you see in what I'm explaining and how they can be used. So we're going to start with a general one. So how do we do this? Well, to do with this, we type this. We want to type at client.event because this is an event we are creating. We are catching errors. And then we want to type async def on underscore command underscore error open and close brackets ctx and an error like that and then a colon. And then, so yeah, let me explain this now, what we've done. So we've done an event, and I'm going to assume you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch some of my previous episodes, and that will explain exactly what this is. So and we're now creating a function of sorts. And this function we're passing in CTX, and we're also passing in this error object. And this error object is what contains the error. And now we're going to actually create the important bit. What do we want to do when our code detects an error with any command or event? So we want to type this. We want to type if is instance, open and close brackets, error, 
Oops, I cannot spell like that. Then commands dot. And now this is where we want to specify a type of error. Maybe we want to specify the missing permissions error or maybe the missing required arguments error. So maybe if you didn't enter like the user's name when I'm banning someone. So I'm going to go with the missing permissions one. And now we want to put a colon and then we want to type a message. So let's type type away ctx.send and then you don't have permission to do this, to run this command. So let me explain exactly what this is. So we're creating an instance basically and we're saying if this error that's being passed in contains a missing permission part of it, so as in if this error is due to missing permissions, then we want to run the following code. And this will apply to any command as I just said, as this event, this on command error is for any command in our code. And that's how we kind of do this. This is how we detect cut detect errors and give an appropriate response for any command. And maybe instead of like replying to the person who runs the command, maybe you wanted to log this. You could then potentially get it so it inputs it into a file of logs. That's something you could potentially do. But now, now let's talk about Pacific error loggers, error catchers for Pacific commands like we've done here. And now this and now to do this, this is where it gets interesting. So instead of typing at client.event, we want to type at and then the name of the function. So I'm going to use this unban error as an example. So as you can see here, we want to type at unban, so the name of the function, so at unban, and then we want to specify that we're looking for errors, so dot error, like that. And now, basically, it's the same as what we did here. Well, kind of. We want to type async def and then unban. Oops, I can't spell. Unban underscore error. Open and close bracket ctx and then error. Like that. And then we can just copy this as it's the same. Like, oops, like that. So you can see here there's a slight difference to what we've just done. So we're calling this unbanned error, so not client event like we did here, because we just want to catch errors for this specific command, the unban command. And then we're creating the function called unban error, and then passing in ctx and error like we did up here. And then the rest of it here is exactly the same as what I explained up here. And I've just realized something, I haven't actually shown you the other options you have for catching errors, the other types of errors that you could have. Like I mentioned one other one, which was if you didn't pass in an, the correct arguments. Let's say you didn't pass in the user's name that you wanted to unban, then this would trigger an error. So as you can see, there's loads of other command errors that we can catch. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to the documentation where you can have a look through to all of the other errors that we can catch. There's loads more and loads of other useful ones that are really useful that you should be using in your code. As it does help a lot, especially in the case of like you don't have permission to run a command. Like maybe you wanted to set up like an unbanned system or a kick system and you only want to put a user with a certain permission to be able to run that command then you definitely want to have this error catcher so that if a user who doesn't have the permissions runs that command there you get a message saying that we don't have permissions hope it makes sense that was kind of confusing but yeah but that kind of brings us to the end of this video. This video was kind of shorter than my other Discord PY videos, but still just as it's extremely useful as you should definitely be using what I showed you here in your bots. If you've enjoyed this video at all and you've learned something, please do hit the thumbs up button as it just helps it out so much in the YouTube algorithm. And while you're down there, please do consider subscribing. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.